Hi, this is Jack Riccardi, and for just a minute, I think we can safely say that this afternoon's radio show is going to be pretty crazy. There is a lot of crazy in the news today, mainly around this leak from the Supreme Court. Didn't you find it interesting that they immediately had to put barricades up around the Supreme Court building, almost as if there would be an insurrection over this leak of a putative ruling uh, overturning Roe v. Wade. We're going to go into the particulars about what actually happened and what we know about it to this point on the show this afternoon, but I did want to make a few quick points. The barricades went up around the Supreme Court building, but the justices for the Supreme Court weren't in there last night. They were in their homes, unaware of what was about to happen, and no more protected last night than they are any other night. Thank God nothing happened to any of them. One of the interesting things that I'm thinking about already is whether or not the purpose of the leak, and we don't know who did it or the path that it took to get to Politico.com, but what's the purpose of the leak to uh, spur greater voter enthusiasm among Democrats? Because abortion is really their thing. It's their sacrament. It's the thing they are most fervent about. I hate to say this, but they don't ever speak with the same passion and feeling about anything as they do about abortion. In fact, it's, cover, it's caused them to rediscover women. Up until yesterday, they had redefined women as anybody who identified as a woman, but all of a sudden women are back in the Democratic Party. So this could be an attempt to gin up uh, enthusiasm for the midterms. There isn't a lot for Democrats to be enthusiastic about, right? It could also be a cover for some voter fraud if the Democrats receive a lot more votes in certain places in the midterms uh, after the uh, votes are counted, people can say, well, it was because there was renewed interest in the wake of the Supreme Court decision on abortion. One of the responses for many Democrats in Congress has been to say, well, now we need to make a federal law codifying the right to an abortion. And to do that, they would have to waive the filibuster rule to pass it. And the interesting thing about that is that if they pass it with 51 votes, in the future, a Republican Senate could undo it with 51 votes. Uh, it's always amazing to me how people don't think past the end of their nose about how things can go. There's also a lot of scaremongering going on. My favorite, I think, of all is Eric Swalwell, the California congressman, who says, now they're going to ban interracial marriage. Isn't it interesting if Clarence Thomas is secretly planning to ban interracial marriage. I'd hate to be Clarence Thomas when he gets home to his white wife, Ginny, and she finds out his secret plan on interracial marriage. And then in, uh, also in California, the governor, Gavin Newsom, says, well, you know what? We'll simply uh, pass our own law, as if this was a brilliant idea. The overturning of Roe v. Wade does not end abortion. It kicks it back to the state legislatures. It allows the voters in each state to make a decision. So, of course, that's what will happen, and Gavin Newsom certainly can do it. There's something called the Tenth Amendment, which we know a lot about in Texas, and which I guess some of the blue states are now going to discover. Anyway, just a few random thoughts on the events of the last 24 hours. We'll be talking about it with you on the radio between 4 and 7, live on 550 and 107.1 KTSA. Plus, our show's on demand when you want it at KTSA.com.